Welcome to the section on rheumatoid arthritis. When we talk about the etiology of rheumatoid arthritis, it is unknown, or what we've been referring to in the last couple chapters as idiopathic. We have no idea. When I think of, you think of arthritis, I tend to think of my grandmother, my 90-year-old grandmother, who was knitting for many, many years before she passed and had a hard time using her knitting needles because of the severe disfiguration from her arthritis. Well, in this case, we're going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune arthritis. We see this affecting all races. It's not just in one race or another. It can begin at any age, but it frequently begins between age 30 and 50. We see more females than males suffer from this, and patients with rheumatoid arthritis tend to have a shortened lifespan. The most frequent cause of death is cardiovascular disease. It is a chronic multi-system autoimmune disorder. We see major inflammatory disorders of the joints, as you can see from the Medscape picture that I have here. The first stage is the initiation of synovitis. This is the um, joints themselves, the synovial fluid, synovial lining becoming very inflamed. And then we have events that perpetuate initial inflammatory reactions, where then there's a transition to an inflammatory reaction in the synovium to proliferate destructive process of the tissues within those joints. We usually see the disease begin with fatigue, anorexia, weakness, and achy and stiffness. It includes the joint, skin, lungs, and vessels. The joint symptoms appear over weeks or months after. They think there's two different mechanisms that could potentially cause this. The first one is an extravascular immune complex hypothesis. They think there's an interaction of antigens and antibodies in the synovial tissues and fluid which cause the complement cascade and phagocytosis. When this phagocytosis happens, it releases hydrolytic enzymes and toxic oxygen which can cause inflammation and tissue damage within those joints. Ouch, right? Well, an alternate hypothesis that they think might cause it could be a cell-mediated damage due to an accumulation of lymphocytes, primarily T-cells, in that synovium resembling a delayed-type hypersensitivity reaction. In that case, we see a presence of lymphokines, which affect both inflammation and destruction within that synovial area. In order to diagnose this, well, the first thing we might do is um, they do a sed rate and see it's elevated. Well, as you know from having me in chemistry, that um, having an elevated sed rate doesn't tell you squat. You have to do more testing. So in this case, we would see a serum protein electrophoresis show elevations in the alpha 2 and gamma fractions. And even better yet, we can do rheumatoid factor test, which is very easy. You'll be performing that in the lab. It's an antibody specific to different antigen determinants. We see it associated with three major classes, IgM, IgG, and IgA, although IgM is serologically detested by, detected by test kits. The kit contains latex beads coated with IgG, but we see IgM more in the patient. Rheumatoid factor positive correlates with um, the severity of the disease and other organ system involvement. And the slight, slight agglutination is a very sensitive and good test, as we will do in lab this week. We see immune complexes consisting of immunoglobulins, complement components, and rheumatoid factors are seen in some patients as well. Complement levels are usually normal, except in those with vasculitis. In that case, we see levels of C4 and C2 markedly decreased. And here's where the anti-nuclear antibodies the, um, that we talked about in one of the previous sections, they're only found in 14 to 28% of patients with a very advanced RA. Another type is called Felty syndrome. This is an association of rheumatoid arthritis with splenomegaly and leukopenia. It usually develops in patients with a high titer rheumatoid factor, a positive ANA, ANA, and rheumatoid nodules. We see high titer immune complex and low serum complement levels with Felty's. Another unfortunate part of rheumatoid arthritis is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. This is having chronic synovitis beginning in childhood. Factors like infection, autoimmunity, and trauma can cause this. In order to be diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, or JRA it's called sometimes, we need to see an onset before 16 years old, arthritis lasting for at least six weeks, and exclusion of other conditions that could potentially cause childhood arthritis. 
We do have a couple subgroups of juvenile, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. The first one is still stills disease. That's one fifth of them. 40% of them have a polyarticular onset, which is polyarthritis in five or more joints. We have a posse articular onset, which is with 40% of patients, and this is arthritis involving four or fewer joints. And just straight rheumatoid arthritis is in 20% of patients. That concludes our section on rheumatoid arthritis.